Hello, I'm here with Paul Antaguk. I'm Katie Walker. Paul, why are we talking about a novel when we're talking about history? Well, it's it's an interesting thing. The author has done something that sometimes they do. They are, I, I think of them as the what ifs of history. And he's writing a what if, si things that turned out just a bit differently historically. It might have reshaped uh, the lives of perhaps tens of thousands of people. And it certainly would have reshaped the history of Alaska. It's a very important turning or pivot point in Alaska history. And it's about the King Havner Bill of 1940. Tell me about it. So people knew that anti-Semitism was uh, a touchstone, a cornerstone of the Nazis' uh, policies and practices in, in Germany in the 1930s. With the Kristallnacht, this night in which essentially uh, the Nazis rioted and destroyed thousands of, of uh, stores and residences of Jews all over Germany, that set off the a panic of how do we get out of here if you're Jewish and where do we go? And the problem that they faced was where do they go? And it was not as simple as it sounds. Some were able to relocate to France, some were able to relocate to the United States, some were able to uh, relocate to Canada and so on. But those are relatively few and they're wealthy and they have connections of some sort in order to pull that off. For tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jews, these were not simple tasks. It wasn't taking a train, going to France and escaping Nazi Germany because you needed to have uh, permanent residency permission in these countries. One of the tragedies was that uh, a group of German Jews actually rented or contracted a cruise ship to take them to Cuba with the understanding that once they arrived in Cuba, that the Cuban government would allow them entry. But by the time they got there, for reasons that are unclear to me, that was not the case. And so they were not allowed to disembark there. And so they tried going to the United States. And in fact, they tried hitting several ports along the way when they were uh, repeatedly refused. The terrible truth about it was they were not allowed entry into the United States and the cruise ship returned to Germany. And many of those people died in the Holocaust. Now, in 19... 40 people wouldn't have known in the late 30s or 40s that you know the Holocaust is unimaginable even though it happened. So before it happened, it's it's just beyond belief. But at the same time, people knew that it was a hostile state environment that the Nazis are creating for the Jewish population. That's where Alaska shows up, oddly enough. The, the thinking was that there was a shortage of whites in Alaska. It wasn't until mid-1930, about 1935, that whites were even a majority of the residents of Alaska, which was a federal territory at the time. So the proposal floating through President Roosevelt's administration, Franklin Roosevelt's, was maybe we do an entry visa and residency, but it's only for Alaska because that will help to diffuse the anti-Jewish atmosphere 
It would relieve that perhaps. And it would help this future of Alaska by bringing tens of thousands of residents into the state who would help to modernize the, the entire territory, perhaps to become a state. Mm. And so that's called the King Habner Bill. Now, because it was a territory, we had no elected delegates in Congress. We had a representative to Congress, but he was a non-voting member. And that person at this time was uh, Anthony Diamond, spelled D-I-M-O-N-D. And there's a high school named after him. And there's a mall. That's and a street. And a street. You know, and other in other ways, he's a, a key figure in Alaska's history, modern history. And he's also a key figure in this pivotal moment in Alaska history. When Alaskan white Alaskans heard about the bill, the proposal, um, almost uniformly, the chambers of commerce for the uh, communities that were larger communities, so Juneau, Ketchikan, St. Petersburg, uh, Fairbanks and Anchorage, one group after another, uh, they all said, we oppose this bill. And that's surprising to me, at least, that that would have been the case. And it was also done by the uh, town councils, where they also represented their opposition, and the pioneers of Alaska which was a powerful organization at the time, also came out in opposition to this bill. Essentially, their argument is that this would change the character of the state of Alaska, which I think is a light veil covering, we're anti-Jewish. We don't want a population that's majority Jews in the territory of Alaska. Anthony Diamond represents that opposition. And the bill is defeated. It's probably, from a historical standpoint, uh, Anthony Diamond's most important decision because it, in, it impacts thousands of lives, and in a very tragic way. And it also represents the, the smallness, the pettiness, the, uh, the narrowness of Alaskans at that time. It's not a very, not a very uh, complimentary uh, view of, of white Alaskans at that time. So Michael Chabon, what he does is he writes his book, The Yiddish Policeman's Union, and it's a novel. And the premise of the novel is that Tony Diamond is run over by a cab in Washington, D.C. And so history takes this entirely different turn because he's not there opposing this bill. It gets run through and tens of thousands of Jews moved to this Alaska-only uh, requirement, and he imagines them populating southeast Alaska, primarily uh, Sitka is the center of this. And it's all the spectrum of Jewish politics and believers, ultra-Orthodox to people who are culturally Jewish but not religiously. And that becomes the stuff of the, of the plot of the, of the novel, because what's happening is that the modification of that, of that bill, the King Havner bill, is that there's a time limit uh, put on it. And this is the 1960s, and so the time limit for this sort of Jewish state within the state is closing down and people are having to make 
terribly important decisions again. And of course, the clinket are, are in the middle of it too, because they're overrun, you know, in their own home territory. And Michael makes this a, a very interesting plot. He wants it to be almost like one of those uh, 1940s, like the Maltese Falcon. Uh, one of those black and white detective who's a little on the edge of things, right. trying to sort things out. It has elements of that. <laughs> and it's it's really a discussion of of this might have been. One of the consequences of it is that because most of the European Jews who survived the Holocaust, which it still occurs, but it's um, you know, it, it's still everything evil that it is, but not nearly as many Jews are, are caught in that uh, moment. And many of them have moved to Alaska, so when the Zionists try to create the state of Israel, they lose. And so there's no uh, Jewish state uh, in in modern history. It just spins out. It's a very interesting book. I think it's the most well-written book that has Alaska as a backdrop of anything that I'm aware of. So it's a it's an important book, and I think it's about an important chapter in uh, Alaska's history. Thanks, Paul.